Minister, uh, as always, you're welcome to the House to discuss these issues. Uh, and obviously, we didn't put forward this motion lightly. Uh, such motions are sometimes uh, interpreted as being highly political in nature uh, and not with keeping in the best interest of patients uh, and with the configuration of our health services. Uh, this, however, uh, is different. I want to put on record, as I often have before, nobody doubts your individual personal commitment on this issue. Sadly, the treatment by the government of your office, uh, notwithstanding the fact that somebody who's quite committed is in it, uh, is uh, nothing short of disgraceful. Uh, consecutive governments, indeed, throughout the history of the state, have to an extent paid lip service to our mental health services. Your, uh, the the, uh, the, the uh, um, evolution uh, of policy uh, up until 2006 uh, was one that none of us were proud of. Uh, and finally, a policy, a vision for change, was agreed uh, and one which, as you rightly said on the radio this morning, uh, was signed up to uh, by all parties and all members uh, of both houses of that time. Sadly, since then, and we celebrated the eighth anniversary of it lately, I myself on that evening was promoting my own document on suicide prevention, uh, actions speak louder than words. Uh, it was the eighth anniversary of a vision for change, and sadly, it is failing. It remains an aspiration that's noble. It remains an aspiration that all of us would support. But sadly, it remains nothing more than an aspiration. In the words of John Saunders, the chairman of the Mental Health Commission, what we have are football teams playing with half of their players. And if you watch Man United Barcelona last evening, as I did, when you're missing even one player, the best of teams are look little more than mediocre. That is what's happening on the ground in the context of our mental health services. Sadly, the fight against loss of life through suicide is being lost hand over fist. The National Office for Suicide Prevention is being starved of resources, is poorly structured and is buried within the bowels of the HSC, subservient to the budgetary demands of the overall Department of Health and HSE budget, as your department is. And indeed, while I don't want you necessarily to confirm or deny it, media reports, for whatever reason, pre-budget highlighted 11th hour, stern and colourful language from you to the Minister for Health and powers that be on the fact that your budget was being stripped of 15 million on the so-called notional, mythical 35 million that's supposed to be ring-fenced every year for um, mental health services. It's always the first calling, even this year, where they're saying that they're going to make up all of those, uh, some 70% of posts that remain unfilled of those vacancies that are there at the moment. Uh, we now hear from the HSC that, well, look, what we're going to do is, at the back end of this year, we're going to lift the pace, we're going to employ those people, uh, and it'll get us through the local elections. But the reality is, Minister, as you know, because it's been happening in practice, the government continue to treat you with contempt, to treat your department with absolutely no respect whatsoever, and you personally, despite your commitment, the fact that you are unable to do that which you know is correct, and that's the speedy implementation of a vision for change. Well, it could be a vision for change all it's like, but I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the geologists are going to have to ascertain the pace of the kind of change that was required through a vision for change. It was envisioned it was going to cost 150 million euro and be complete in 10 years. We're a million miles from where it should be. It's not there. And frankly, as you well know, your department are being starved of resources. Tonight we have mentioned, uh, uh, apart from the general mental health issues, where I feel we are losing the battle, as I said, suicide prevention. Uh, there are higher instances of mental health issues. One in four of us have a mental health issue. One in 20 of us will have suicide ideation. And who do we call? What do we do? Well, it's okay provided you don't need a counsellor in a school. It's okay provided you don't need a 24-hour social worker. It's okay provided uh, you don't look, need support, depending on where you are. And now it seems that in, Bar in, in, in Ballinasloe and certain parts of Cork, uh, there are going to be acute services, state-of-the-art services, that cost three million or more, uh, are going to be stripped away and put in to UCHG, uh, a department and an area, that particular uh, uh, unit uh, 
uh, was condemned by the Mental Health Commission uh, as being unfit. But yet we're going to put people from a state-of-the-art facility in there and say, that's where you'll go. Is this the right thing? Anecdotal evidence suggests that what we've had over the last period of time is two such patients sitting on trolleys in one of the busiest A&E units in the entire country. I mean, is that the vision that a vision for change promotes in terms of treatment in the community, giving people dignity and respect when they're at their most needy hour? No, it is not. Why, Minister? Because there's no respect for you of your office. Minister Riley kicks it around kicks it around, I need 10 million, we take it from there. It'll be expeditious to employ those people at the back end of the year. We put it all on the never-never, and we don't care who dies or who's ill from a mental health perspective in the meantime. Now, specifically to do with Ballina Sloan, let me say that this particular decision was made on a flawed evaluation. I would like to see, as with Minister Riley, indeed in the primary care centres, and how he managed to come up with the criteria that suited himself, what criteria was used to shut down that which is, is exceptionally well built, which has the full facilities, has a staff, which has been described by uh, Dr O'Grady and the 50 GPs in the area as clinically imprudent. What? was the criteria and evaluation methodology used. I'm told it dates back to 2006 and definitely couldn't take adequate cognizance of the up-to-date scenario in terms of infrastructure that's in place, whether it's roads, whether it's staff, or anything else. Secondly, um, the people of Roscommon, as we know, have been treated disgracefully by this government, who, with the greatest act of political delinquency, signed letters from the teacher minister saying, we keep your A&E, this will be great, and we all know they weren't worth the paper they're written on in the same way as you'll be given false and mythical uh, commitments by your senior minister, who, won't, who you are subservient to because he won't give you the money. And there's nothing you can do about it. This time last year, or a bit more, Minister Roisin Shorto sat in that seat you're sitting before she saw the light and said, I'm not putting up with this anymore. I have a job to do, and you cannot expect me to do it when you won't give me the money to do it. So what we'll do is, we'll close Ballon the Slow, we'll stuff it in on the most cramped site in the country where hematologists, physiologists, uh, um, and a wide variety of all the disciplines have described this site as beyond capacity into a place that when you were defending yourself against Colin Keefe TD in the other house last week, the roof was falling down, now held up by ACROs and RSGs. And that's where we want to put people into these units. That is what you're told, Minister. Have you been in Galway in the last week? No, you're not. I'm listening to the people on the ground. I'm listening to the people from Ballinasloe in Galway City who are telling me that this place is beyond capacity. And I would put it to you, Minister, that the choice to stuff this into Galway uh, is in some way placate Roscommon for the disgraceful treatment of them We've lost Deputy Nocton, one of the best that there ever was in Leinster House, and what, uh, uh, because we gave a commitment, we told lies to the people about the A&D, but we must do something now for poor Deputy Frank Fian, who is going to get cleaned out of it. Cleaned out of it because the lying telling by the government pre-election was a lot more robust than the delivery post-election. And that is the reality. Uh, so what we have is political expediency on one hand, putting Ballina Slow, stuff it into UCHG, uh, placate Roscommon with a promise that, that, that they'll play a part after the disgraceful treatment of them. We also have a flawed evaluation process which dates back to 2006, doesn't take any cognizance of it. And in fact, a very core principle of a vision for change is the fact that there will be a consultative process where the users of the services will be consulted. Tell me, how many users were consulted on this? None is the answer. Not one physician, not one user, not one of them were asked, do you want to go to UCHG or do you want to stay here? Do you want to stay in the units in Cork that are supposed to be closed down or do you want to stay there? The reality is, because of the pressures that are on the system nationally from a staffing point of view, and this has come from the John Saunders of the world uh, and the Dr. McDevitts of the world, who claim, who claim uh, that uh, because of the lack of pace in hiring key nursing staff and other staff that are available, it's making it impossible for them to run inpatient outfits. They're having to pull people from the community. So a vision for change is dead. Why is it change? Minister, I put it to you again. Your own senior minister is treating you like muck. They're making you look stupid because they won't give you the money that you need, you know you need, you're entitled to. Uh, and that is the reality. Now, the latest victim in a headless chicken approach to health management and health planning is this state-of-the-art unit in Ballinasloe. 
where uh, excellent services have been provided here to four, they can continue to be provided, and we are not ready from a community perspective uh, to wind down services like this. Sure, there'll be some consultant or other wheel out to say, you know, well, this is the best way forward and blah, blah, blah. The reality is it was a flawed evaluation process. I'd like to see it published. Colin Keevely has requested that it be published. It has not been. Uh, I know myself, having used at, at nauseum the Freedom of Information uh, um, Act to try and get information uh, from that particular outfit over the years is very difficult. But we will get to the bottom of it. We will get to the bottom of it. And I would caution, Minister, a very serious mistake is about to be made here by government yet again. A vision for change is all but dead in the water because of the fact that you are starved of resources. And despite your individual wish to maybe deliver it, or the minister before you, or the minister who wrote it, Johnny Maloney, the reality is it is failing. And it is failing because this government doesn't give a damn about mental health services. Not a tuppenny damn. That is a fact. The proof is in the pudding, but don't take it from me. Thank take you. it from John Saunders, the McDevitts and the other people, and the people from Ballon Slough that are here tonight who see the latest innovation in a government's headless Thank chicken approach you. to mental health services.